Coming to you from the Black Goat 39 Studios, this is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast, episode 102. Now here's your host, the Guru of Sports. Hello sports fans, you guys know that sound, Peace Frog from my favorite rock group of all time, The Doors, you know that I love The Doors, how's everybody doing, I'm the guru of sports and here I am now back with episode 102 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in, and um, I just want to say that I really, really appreciate you listening. I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, I got some new subscribers, and I heard a lot from uh, a lot of different people this week. Actually, um, earlier today, um, right now this is Sunday morning. Um, I got, uh, I put, put everybody to bed and basically I'm up right now, um, watching Saturday Night Live and enjoying the, uh, peace and quiet that I'm, that I desperately need. And, um, I just want to say thank you guys once again for, uh, tuning in to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Like I said, this is episode 102. Um, I, you know, I don't really have a whole lot today, but, you know, I always say that, you know, this is going to be a short show, but it's never short because, yeah, I do kind of repeat some things and then I go over some things and then, you know, I kind of, you know, go back around and then come back and then, you know, do stuff like that. But, you know, I, I just have two topics that I really, really wanted to get, um, uh, you know, get off because I, you know, I, you know, I look at it this way. I have that segment. What's pissing you off, right? What's pissing you off. But right now, baseball and the Los Angeles Lakers is pissing me off. You know, I, I can't understand why. And, you know, I had this conversation with uh, Dave made junior, my, um, my baseball insider. He gave me some great insights and I want to thank him for always being available for me. And I really, really, really appreciate uh, his contributions to the podcast and, you know, his part, uh, his uh, participation when, you know, like I said, anytime I need it, I can basically go to him and I really appreciate that. And that's really one of the things that makes this podcast go. One of the uh, engines that uh, propels this thing. I want to say thank you, Dave, May again. Um, what, like I said, you know, it's just, it seems as though that certain things, certain things are okay, but certain things are just really, really bad. I got the game that I love, baseball. It's in dire straits. The team that I love in basketball, one of my favorite teams, the Lakers, they stink. And, you know, we was joking around. I said, hey, look, I ain't got no winners here. You know, besides the Jaguars, the Orioles, the Dodgers, the Lakers, who do I got that's winning right now? Nobody. You know, um, I'm still kind of concerned about Georgetown basketball, if they're going to get into the tournament or what they're going to do, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on. You know, um, you had Duke, uh, Coach K's last game, which he got spanked in, 
And, um, you know, North Carolina came in and spanked that butt, sending them out with a loss. You got conference tournaments going on. You got this uh, new series on HBO called Winning Time, which is, uh, you know, talking about the uh, L.A. Lakers and the dynasty and everything. Um, Covington Mass Football is, you know, still going on. They haven't started. I don't know if they started yet or whatever. Um, you got, uh, uh, what else you got going on? You, we got the NFL Combine. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on here. And what I'm looking at right now is just two things. Baseball and the Lakers. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Why is it that the sport that I love so much is just not getting along? And, you know, I, I'm going to I'm gonna break down some of the things. And, you know, I, I actually came out and was thinking about who's in the wrong, who's in the right of this. And, you know, I have to kind of side with the players on this. Now, I don't really like to see lockout strikes or anything interrupting games or anything canceling games. But, you know, um, I wanted to ask you this question. Do you think I would be a good commissioner for baseball? I probably would. But I'm not going to go on about that. I did put something out there on Facebook. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, I'm on the El Briscoe on Facebook. But I put something out there saying that, hey, look, there was a couple things that I would do. But I look at it this way. I would not want to work for the owners in this situation because the owners are very much the problem of what's going on in baseball. Now, they're trying to break the union, and they're probably going to uh, try to hold out as much as they can and not let the players, you know, you know, deal with this, uh, the CBA and which the CBA did expire in December. My question is, is that if it expired in December, why they just couldn't right after the season get to the table and say, Hey, look, you know what? Let's start talking about this thing right now and trying to negotiate on it. No, what they did was 10 years, or 10, I'm sorry, 10 days before the deadline, that the uh, self-imposed deadline that the owners put together, they said that they were going to, they were going to uh, go to the, you know, negotiating table. You know, this is a problem with baseball, and you know, I, I really, really can't. I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody, but then again, I'm speaking for myself in this because, you know, like I said, the Guru Talking Sports podcast is my thoughts and my opinions. You know, it's not anything of Spreaker or it's not nothing of uh, anybody else's. This is my point of view on what is going on in the world of sports. Now, if you knew that this thing was going to expire, why you just couldn't get, if it expired in December, why you guys couldn't go to the table the next day and say, hey, look, you know what? Let us try to work on something, you know, to get these, you know, so we can have time to basically, you know, get the season started on time. Sit down and talk. Let's get it ironed out. No, they waited 10 days before the self-imposed deadline and now they're going to talk and then you know on Monday I think it was the uh, first or Tuesday was the first I knew that 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 wasn't going to happen you know and then they said they worked through the night or whatever up until three four o'clock in the morning whatever I knew that these deadlines wasn't going to go I knew something like this was going to happen you know I don't understand why Guys just couldn't get to the table earlier. Iron this thing out. 
Get the players down in the spring training and get it going. I don't understand it. But this is baseball. Baseball has now fallen to about maybe fourth in the pecking order of sports. Now, if you say football is number one, you're correct. If you say basketball is number two, yeah, that's that's fairly fairly right. Uh, hockey is number three. Yeah, I could say that. Baseball is number four. Now, I'll say about like maybe uh, 50, 60 years ago, baseball was probably number one. And then you might have had basketball, hockey, and then the NBA. But the NBA has come up so much. And now you see the NBA is a lot better sport. And they pretty much have been able to get their product out there a lot more now with, you know, the likes of Steph Curry, Giannis, and LeBron. You know, one of the things I do look at is that basketball has Adam Silver now as their commissioner, but, you know, before they had David Stern, David Stern made it to the point where he said that we're going to make the league stars shine and make the game big. And then Adam Silver, you know, years later, told, talk to Rob Manford, the commissioner of Major League Baseball, and told him, hey, look, you know what? This is what you do need to do to get your sport together, you know. <laughs> it's funny because Rob, Rob Manford is very much out of touch on everything. He don't know what's going on. I'm going to get into what he did a little bit later. In this segment. Now I only have two halves in this. This uh, episode. Of the uh, Guru Talking Sports Podcast. First half is going to be basically. Everything on baseball. Second half I'm going to talk about the Lakers. Before I end the first half. I'm going to talk about. Uh, a little bit about the. Uh, little things that. Uh, I did mention before. I'm going to talk about the. Uh, well, Duke in uh, North Carolina was really good. Um, I actually did not get a chance to see uh, the Lakers and uh, Golden State tonight, only because I was afraid of uh, watching a very, very terrible game. But I did sneak back around and watch some of the highlights, and then I saw that, you know, the Lakers won. I don't know how, but... Golden State, as I mentioned, has not been playing, not been playing really good, and now they didn't drop four in a row before the Lakers had their four-game skid, which means that they haven't won anything since the All-Star break. Okay, I'm going to take a little short break right here, and um, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk baseball, and we're going to talk about all the things that me and Dave May Jr., talked about today and we're going to um I'm going to give you my thoughts and um I'm going to actually uh get into some of the stuff that we talked about on the other side here. Guys hang loose. This is the Guru Talking Sports podcast, episode 102 and thank you for joining us. We'll be right back in just a few seconds. Hang tight. Okay, welcome back to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. This is episode 102. Um, I was sitting up here watching Saturday Night Live, which is uh, one of the best things that I can, you know. I, I, I love Saturday Night Live. I know it's kind of, you know, has lost its luck, you know, a little bit of this, uh, you know, excitement or whatever. But I really like it. I, I love the, uh, love sitting down watching that program. And um, also, I want to mention this before I, you know, forget, Guru forgets a lot of stuff. Um, there's a, uh, I did mention this in the opening, that there is a, a new series on HBO starting tonight called The Winning Time. 
and it's about the uh, Los Angeles Lakers and their rise to their dynasty in 1979 when Jerry Buss uh, brought Magic in. And um, you guys kind of really know the story, but um, I cannot remember right off who wrote the book for, about this and um, they turned it into a movie. So, I, you know, I should have did a little bit more research on that, but I do know. That um, this this uh, series is going to be basically told about how uh, Magic, Kareem, Dr. Jerry Buss, and everything. Um, it should be pretty good. Okay, now let's get back to uh, baseball. Now, from what I was on, what I understand, and I'm trying to break this down as uh, simple as possible for the average fan. Now, like I said, I'm on the side of the players. I understand that, you know, uh, now every fan, and I've, I've heard this all over, you know, all this week, that, hey, you know what, I am a fan of the game. I'm going to leave the game. I'm tired of these people arguing over money and everything. You know, now in this situation, it's not really about money. It's about service time which is something that um, the, the, the younger players are, you know, being basically kind of like held hostage and by the owners. They, um, they're basically getting the serve, they're not, you know, they're not getting, you know, compensated for their service time. So let's put it like this. You can have a player, and let's say a team might need them. Like let's say, let's uh, let's say the Tampa Bay Rays. The player might be in the minor leagues, and they bring him up to the major leagues, and they probably only need him for like maybe uh, you know thirty days or so, or they might need him for a weekend. Let's say a weekend. They bring him up. And then let's say like this player is only uh, 21 or so. And then, you know, he gets kind of rushed up to the big leagues. And then you say to yourself, wow, why is this guy in the major leagues? And then next thing you know, they release him. And then he has to use one of his options or so is from what I was understanding the league. Now. That player can be cycled through organizations, rung up to the major leagues, and then released or so. And then next thing you know, he's not really getting credited for service time. So now, that player is, kind of, like I said, kind of being held hostage by uh, the organizations or so. It's not right. It's not right. Now, I'm going to try to go back and try to break it down like this. This has been, you know, service time. You know, if you remember Chris Bryant, Chris Bryant had a, a thing with the Cubs where he had, you know, he was ready to go. He was ready to play. But, you know, the Cubs wanted to hold him back a little bit more to make sure that he can get, he can get to the major leagues and then makes basically um, when he gets up there, you know, they still have the option over him or so, you know, it's, it's like, like I said, it's kind of like being held hostage by your uh, uh, employer, but let's look at it this way. In 71, it was all about pensions. 74 was about free agency. And in 94, it was about the salary salary cap, okay, the salary cap in place. These, these were basically uh, situations where, you know, everybody knows about the strike of 94. Some of you younger people might not know about the strike of 94. So, it all rolls down to this, basically. The players want to be compensated for their service time. They want to raise the uh, 
the base up to $238 million. And they want to be able to have the salary, average salary of major leaguers up to about, let's say, $650 million or $650,000, okay? $650 million, uh, that would be a lot for one player, wouldn't it? Okay, so they want to, that's what basically the players want, you know, and the owners don't want to do that. They want to impose, you know, a salary cap, and they want to be able to say, you know what, um, you know, we don't want to really do the service time things, and, you know, it's just really ridiculous to the point where, you know, you're holding, t- you know, holding players back and not giving them their time. You know, it's it's ridiculous. Um, okay, so let's look at it this way. Four teams do not want to make the salary cap move, the luxury tax. They don't want it to move. So I guess those four teams and then basically all the other ones are going to start, you know, they're going to start falling in line with this. Okay. Now, what I see is basically like this. They have to do something. They have to agree on something because the owners want to hold out as much as possible and they're going to try to break the union. And they're basically going to just say, you know what, we're going to do everything to get the players to cave in. And from what Dave told me, he said, hey, look, you know, the players are, you know, players want to play. You know, the players are the fabric of the sport. You know, how many owners do you know by name? How many owners do you know by name? I I know one because uh, he's probably one of the worst owners in baseball, and I don't know if his uh, sons or family took over. Peter Angelos, yeah. You know, I know him. The Orioles, yeah. I know him. Whatever. But, you know, the players need to be out there playing. And, you know, they wanted to prorate their uh, salaries because of what happened through the pandemic. Now, I'm going to get to the pandemic part of this in a second, but I want you to listen to this, okay? I did a little bit of research. Yeah, Guru does research a little bit. And I found this. Here's the average salary or average annual revenue of Major League Baseball from 2015. In 2015... Major League Baseball's annual revenue was $8.39 billion. Okay? All these are billions, and I'm not going to you know, keep saying billions because this is all about money, right? Okay, 2016, 9.03. 2017, 9.46. 2018, 9.9. 2019, listen to this, 10.0. Point thirty seven billion dollars. Now twenty twenty three point six six billion. Okay. Major League Baseball has increased every single year up until twenty twenty. And you know what happened in twenty twenty? We started this pandemic thing. That's right. Now if Major League Baseball is making it, and you see all these, uh, you just heard me read off all these numbers that are rising, why is it that Rob Manfred, Major League Baseball commissioner, just came out and said, hey, look, we've been losing money the last five years. I'm going to repeat that again. Rob Manfred came out and said, we have been losing money the last five years. Now, if now I'm getting ready to say this. 
Bob Manfred, you are a bold faced liar. How in the hell do you think the sport has lost money over five years due to the pandemic? That's what he said. The pandemic is only two years old. 2020 was the year of the pandemic. And he said Major League Baseball has been losing money. You are, my friend, a liar. I don't know where you're getting your facts from, but you know what? I researched this, and I'm not going to sit up here and tell you guys no lie. Major League Baseball has been flourishing for the you know, from 2015. And from what I was told, baseball's momentum was basically coming back with the younger crowd around 2018, 2019. And like I said, the pandemic hit in 2020. So, Rob Manford, once again, you are a bold-faced liar and you shouldn't be sitting up there telling them this lie, you know, and I, I just can't understand why you would sit there and say that you're a liar and you're right. Baseball had, had turned the corner and they've been trying to do a lot of different things like make all these, uh, programs for, you know, minority kids to play and doing all these things to where, you know, we're bringing more you know, minority kids in to play in the major leagues as well. And it was starting to pick up. $3.66 billion is a lot of money, but, you know, due to the pandemic, this is what happened, okay? I just can't understand why, you know, the owners are basically doing this. Now, from what I was understand, what I understand is that you know, this thing might not be settled until, like, maybe, uh, let's say, beginning in April. Or they might be able to start the season maybe around in May. Hopefully, they can start the season in May. And, you know, the owners don't want to pay out for the games that are missed. They don't care about the games that are missed. They just want to make money and hold their money. You know, the teams like the Yankees, the Dodgers, the uh, the Mets now, they got a lot of money. They got a lot of money. And what it is is that the teams like maybe Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, uh, the smaller teams can't really do what they can do. They can't do what the big teams do. Now, you got to remember one thing. Fans really do not pay that much of the player's salary. Fans do, in a way. Yeah, they do. But most of the players are getting paid by TV revenue. Let's say, like, you know why the Yankees can pay out a lot? Because of the Yes Network. You know why the Dodgers can pay out? Because of their, net, you know, their, you know, their television contract. The Mets, same way, you know. Baseball is ran by money. You know how money is. I mean, yeah, obviously everything is ran by money. But the thing about it is that teams like Pittsburgh, they don't have, they don't have the greater, they don't have the big, big pockets like the other teams do. Baltimore don't. Masson takes care of both, you know, the Orioles and everything and, and the uh, Washington Nationals. But the thing about it is that they can't compete with the bigger teams like the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Mets, and all that. But we got to look at it this way. They want to, they should be able to have it shared throughout all the big, big TV money coming from, let's say, like NBC or CBS or Fox or whatever, it should have been spread around. 
But see, teams like Pittsburgh is not going to take all that money. They're going to use it on something else. They're going to use it on something else. And that's why you see teams like the Orioles, the Pirates, you know, are still coming up short. You know, it was a whole lot to understand, and I'm still trying to work on understanding the whole dynamic of what this thing is with baseball and trying to understand it from both sides. But I don't see it from the owner's side. I understand it from the player's side. You know, I I tried out for the Montreal Expos years ago. And I wasn't that good, yeah. I wasn't that good. I meant um, my failed baseball story. I, I I can go on and on about it, but I look at it this way: you got to be able to put the product out there, and you got to be able to have the product, you know, speak for itself. The stars of the game of baseball are not really being, you know. It, you know, how how many people would know, recognize, I mean, yeah, Mike Trout, we all know who Mike Trout is. Um, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., how would you, you know, kind of know who he is if he's out there? If he walked by you, would you recognize him? You know, I look at it this way. You got to remember. Basketball and football, you you all, everybody knows who those stars are. You know, I I can't really say too much about hockey because, yeah, I do know the main stars, Sidney Crosby, uh, Alexander Ovechkin, I know who he is. I, if I'd seen him out in the restaurant, I would know who he is. Baseball needs to promote the stars a lot more and make them you know, house, you know, make them to where you you say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who Vlad Guerrero is. I know who uh, uh, the Bichette youngster is, you know, I, you know, and stuff like that. It's just that we, uh, this sport has just been falling and falling and falling. And I hate to see this because this is my sport. I love baseball. You know, I have had a lot of people come up to me and talk to me about, hey, look, you know what? I'm done with baseball. I am done with baseball. I am not coming back. You know, me and Ray Guru had this conversation, and, you know, he's he's not happy with the way baseball is going. I'm not either, but, you know, I still, you know, I still have hope for this game. I still have some, you know, hope. And promise and, you know, maybe that, you know, things can turn around. You know, it's funny because, like, Kane Guru told me this once before. He said, Dan, I'll go to a baseball game. But if you want to you want to sit up here and watch a baseball game on TV, you can do it by yourself because it just it's boring on TV. I'd rather go to the game. And that's how a lot of people are. You know, I didn't really watch a lot of baseball last season because of, uh, you know, my new adventures and traveling and everything. But I did catch it on the radio. I do like to listen to it, you know, when I'm, you know, sitting at a, you know, a stop or so and trying to, you know, just relax and rest a little bit. I do. I, you know, like I caught opening day with the Dodgers last year and, you know, it's, it's, it's still fun to me. It's still fun. But the fundamentals of baseball is leaving the fabric of America because of all the stuff that's been going on. You know, now people got more things to do. You know, the pandemic, two years of this stuff. You know, people have basically found other things to do. You know, the sports calendar turned around in the last year and a half or so, two years or so. It turned around. It was to the point where 
yeah, we had baseball, you know, going into, you know, October and all that. But then again, you know, you have basketball that was in the summertime. And, you know, it was it was just crazy. But the thing about it is that people are leaving baseball. Leaving baseball behind. And then you got this, excuse the expression, dumbass, Rob Manfred that's, you know, basically out there laughing because, ha, 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 we got to cancel games. That's not fucking funny. Excuse the expression. That's not fucking funny to me. Put the guys on the field. Get the damn deal done. Get baseball back on the field where they need to be. Oh, my goodness. I, it's just, you just talk about something that's pissing me off. That's, this is, ah, jeez. Anyway, let me take a break right here. I'll be back in a few seconds. And, um, you know, we'll talk about something else. We'll talk about, we'll get into a little bit of uh, the other little stuff that was going on today. This is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast, episode 101, or 102, I'm sorry. The baseball just pissed me off to the point where I just forgot the episode number. Anyway, this is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast, episode 102. Hold tight. I'll be right back in just a second. Welcome back to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast, episode 102. Um... I just had to look over some of my notes here, and um, like I said, um, I'm going to wrap this thing up about baseball in a few minutes, but um, service time is one of the main things that the players are looking for. A uh, 12-team playoff is probably going to go down. It's going to stay at a 12-team playoff. I know they wanted a 14-team playoff given two extra spots, uh, you know, but I, I think, I, I think that's probably what, I don't know. I think that's what they're going to try to agree on and it might've already went through or so. Um, players for arbitration numbers. That's what the players want. Um, they need to have a salary cap. Definitely need to have a salary cap. Now, like I did mention before, um, this goes all the way back to about 50 or 55, 60 years or so. In 1971, you got to remember, Kurt Flood was the uh, first one to uh, say, hey, you know what? I'm not, uh, you don't have my rights to where I want to play. I want to play somewhere else, I should have the option to be somewhere else. Owners should not have my rights to do that. And Kurt Flood was the uh, pioneer of the free agent movement. And which some we all know about how free agency is now. Kurt Flood was the uh, godfather of it. Um, in 74, it was about free agency. With Marvin Miller and um, Kurt Flood working together. They basically uh, made the free agency uh, policy in baseball. And basically, it spread out to where, you know, everybody, every every sport has, you know, fall through, you know, fell through with the free agency um, thing. In 1994, we, you know, we had to strike the uh, World Series canceled and everything. It was about salary cap. They, they wanted to have a salary cap in place. And, you know, we lost a lot of games. We lost the whole season. And we lost the whole part of uh, the 1995 season. You know, and I keep hearing this thing about, you know, Cal Ripken, uh, Sammy Sosa, and uh, Mark McGuire brought the sport back. They did. You know, I agree that they did. But... You got to remember one thing. Baseball has never recovered from 94. And with this right now, what's going on, 
if they keep going down this road, this is going to be the final blow. And people are not going to be coming back. I just hope that they do. I really hope that they do. I just really hope that the owners and the players union in baseball can get together and find a solution and solve this thing and put the players back on the uh, on the field. And you know how it is, you know. Some of the players are saying, hey, you know what, we got to get back on the field because, uh, you know, wife needs uh, this and our wife needs that. And hey, you know, uh, you know, I'm starting to hear from the wife because, you know, I <laughs> they want to get back on, they want to get back to work, and I know that they do, because uh, you know, I understand how 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 they feel in a way, because you know how it is. If you're married, you know, you want to you want to get make sure that you can take care of the baby, and take care of the wife, make sure that she's okay, and you know, and you know. If you have a job where you travel or do whatever you do, you know, it's nice to get away for a few seconds or so. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's what I'm going to wrap it up on baseball. But um, I, like I said, I do want to mention a few little things. Uh, I did mention the uh, uh, that Showtime or uh, Winning Time on uh, HBO. I got to definitely watch that. This is one of the series that I'm looking forward to uh, watching. I still haven't got anything on the uh, fight from Masvidal and Covington. I'm just basically been flipping. And like I said, this is a perfect time to do a podcast because everybody's asleep. Uh, dogs are asleep. Let's Google sleep and everybody, you know, I don't have to be, you know, kind of, you know, bugged or interrupted or whatever. So anyway, um, Still haven't had anything, heard anything about Masvidal and uh, and uh, Covington. Um, the NFL Combine is going on, and I heard that they've been really, really good. Real, uh, some of these wide, the wide receivers crop is going to be very, very good. They're going to be fast, but from what I've heard, also they need to, you know, speed is everything, you know. Just look at Jamar, uh, Jamar Chase and um, Jefferson. Look at those guys. But you got to remember, too, do they have a whole total package? Being able to catch, being able to break tackles after the, uh, after, uh, you know, yards after catch. Stuff like that. Um, also, conference tournaments are starting. Um, Big South is starting. Winthrop. Uh, has won. They're going to go on into their uh, championship uh, final. I guess they're going to go in tomorrow or a little bit later on today. Um, women's tournament is going on. Um, if you didn't hear, uh, there's a situation with Brittany Griner over in Russia. Uh, she was detained for uh, drug possession. But what she had was a vape, and it had some kind of oil in it or whatever, cannabis oil. I don't know. I just hope that, uh, you know, she can get out of Russia and get back home. Um, a lot of people have been, you know, following this thing, and they basically, uh, you know, just wish her the best, and hopefully that she can just get back uh, back home safely. And hopefully, I'm, I'm going to be praying for her. You know, I really like Brittany Griner when uh, she was at Baylor. I thought she was probably one of the most dominant women players I've ever seen. Uh, she's great. She's great. And uh, uh, God willing, and bless her and bring her back home safely. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that, you know, was big on the uh, sports agenda uh, today was uh, Duke and North Carolina. Um, Coach K's final game in uh, Cameron, and I, I, th- I, I watched a little bit of it. I did get a chance to watch a little bit of it. But North Carolina just came out and uh, really dominated in the second half and really put the wood to uh, – Duke and um, you, you you know 
Duke has always had really great players. Um, I saw Tra uh, Trajan Langdon, uh, Jay Williams, uh, all those guys, Zion, um, you, you name it. They, they've they had great, great players over the years. And um, all of them came back for Coach K's uh, final game in Cameron Arena. Um, you know, he they lost, but... You know, he said that he, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't because, you know, they, when he lost, lost this game, he uh, made a big speech and he said, hey, you know what, I'm still proud of these guys, no matter what. Um, he said, yeah, this is a loss, but you got to remember too that they, they still have to play in the tournament and um, he's not done yet. You know, this is not the final game of his career. But, you know, I want to want to say one thing about Coach K. Coach K is a great guy. Um, even though that, you know, he do kind of re resembles the, uh, the blue, do blue, do blue devils, uh, mascot. <laughs> uh, it's hard to say, right? Um, 572 wins in Cameron. Um, a 883 winning percentage. And just for uh, the record, twenty two wins and nineteen losses versus UNC in Cameron. Now you gotta remember UNC is uh you know, had some great players, you know, Jordan, uh, Sam Perkins, uh, you know, James Worthy, all these guys. Um, you know, UNC and Duke is probably one of the best rivalries in sports other than my Ohio State Buckeyes in Michigan. And we all know, well, didn't really go really good this year with Ohio State. But, um, if you look at some of the great rivalries in college basketball, in sports in general, you'll see that Duke and North Carolina is probably like one of the biggest ones. Other than, you know, Kansas and, you know, Michigan State. Or, you know, so all the Blue Bloods. All the Blue Bloods have really good, uh, good rivalries in uh, college basketball. And, you know, and that's one of the things I like about college basketball is because they play each other no matter what. So you might see uh, Duke play UCLA during the season. You might see uh, Michigan State play uh, Kansas or so. You know, and like I said, if Villanova might play, uh, you know, Duke. You never know. I mean... I like, that's the one thing I like about college basketball is that everybody plays everybody and they can play everybody, which is a good thing. All right. Now I'm going to end this, this, uh, part of the podcast and we're going to go to the second half of the podcast and we're going to talk a little bit of Lakers basketball and their problems, and <laughs> they're lucky that they won uh, today. But I want to say thank you once again for uh, checking out the podcast. Remember to subscribe and listen, and, um, you know, check us out. I really appreciate it. And like I said, this is the end of the first half, so I'm going to go ahead and, and horn is going to blow in a second. That's the indication of the first half. The first half has actually ended, and we'll be back with the second half. This is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast, episode 101. No, it's not. It's actually episode 102. I keep saying 101. I don't know why. 101 was last week. I know. Uh, Guru's tired, so I wanted to tell you that. But anyway... I really appreciate you listening. Give me a few seconds, and I'll be right back. Talk to you soon. Hang loose. Be right back. 
Welcome back to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. This is episode 102 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. I know, I know. I actually been saying 101. I'm not sure why, because 101 is kind of like kind of hip to me. I don't know. Um, I did get some clarification on the uh, Mass Vidal Covington fight. Uh, Covington won that fight in a, a one-sided decision. I, I'm sorry, but I am a, I kind of like I like Jorge Masvidal. I really do, and um, just sorry to see him lose. Okay, now let's talk some Laker basketball, or lack that there is of Laker basketball. They haven't won a game. They wasn't really really sharp. Right now they are twenty eight and thirty five and which puts them fourth in the uh, Pacific uh division. Um fourth. Yeah, fourth. <laughs> you know, and the thing about the Lakers is that they're old and I've been saying this for the longest time. The pieces don't fit and they are terrible. They are just pathetic. And, you know, honestly, I didn't really watch. I, I watched the highlights of this. And I'm watching the highlights right now on SportsCenter. Only because I thought this was going to be a hot. I mean, uh, 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 why would you put hot garbage, which is the Lakers, on TV, prime time, 8 o'clock on a Saturday night when, you know, a lot of people are going to be watching this. And you got Steph and. Clay, you know, all these guys that, you know, go to state. And, you know, they were just basically, I thought they were going to mop the floor with the Lakers tonight. Lakers came out and played some pretty good ball. They won 124 to 116. LeBron had 56 points. This was the uh, third highest point total he had in his career. And, uh, plus the facts, this is only, this is like the, uh, the second time this didn't happen that a player's had 56 points and he's over, over, uh, you know, 30 some odd only because Kobe had uh 60 in his final game. I remember that. That was, uh, that was a very, very emotional game. You know, you think about the Lakers and you think about how, how bad they are, how far they have fell in the standards or whatever, and, you know, how far they then fell off from the, uh, you know, they just won the championship two years ago. 2020, they won the championship. But do you think that that was just a farce? I don't know. Lakers just don't have chemistry. I mean, with, like I said, you know, Carmelo Anthony, and Russell Westbrook has not been the answer for this team all season. Russell Westbrook, I've seen him play where he's throwing the ball away, and you know they just got rid of uh, the uh, DeAndre Jordan because he threw the ball in the stands and almost hit uh, his uh, LeBron's uh, agent in the face or whatever with a basketball. You know, it's just so much stuff that's going on. Then I heard the stuff about Jerry West. They took away his season tickets for life. And it's just so much drama. So much drama. You know, and that's the thing. You can't, you cannot concentrate. You cannot be able to do your job in the right professional way if there's a whole lot of controversy going on, you know, I don't understand how this team, you know, that was a good win for them tonight. That was a really good win for them tonight, but that's not going to help it. It's not, you know, it's just like putting lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig, right? You can't, this, this is not going to be fixable. This is not going to be fixable until the end of the season and, you know, you know, 
LeBron was mad because they didn't get Russ, get rid of Russ at the trade deadline. Well, I mean, you wanted this guy on this team, right? Now you're going to turn around and get mad because they couldn't get rid of him? Palenka couldn't get rid of him? Jeannie Buss couldn't get rid of him? Man, this is a sad, sad situation. Now, you know what? I Give me the six years that we wasn't in the playoffs and we were struggling over this crap where you got players that don't fit, that are not doing. This is ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. I just, I just can't see this. I can't see this. This is, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not to the point where I'm just, you know, fed. I, I am fed up. Believe me, I am fed up over this team, but I just, I just don't understand how it's gotten to this point. You know, I, I, you know, they had options. They had players that they could have went after. You know, Buddy Hill was, would have been a perfect Laker. You know, he's a good, good guy, good, you know, good player, good shooter, great shooter. But no, they wanted to go after Russell Westbrook. You know, I heard a lot of things about Russell Westbrook. Stat stuffer, you know, not really a winner. You know, couldn't win when they, you know, you know, when he, him and Harden and uh, KD was together. This is sad, man. This is sad. I've never seen a team like this, you know, far fall this bad. You know, I've watched a lot of Laker basketball. I remember Laker basketball when it was, you know, going back to, you know, Will Chamberlain and Jerry West. Yeah, I remember that. Um, Kareem, you know, I was out in Los Angeles when we had the uh, Showtime Lakers of the 80s. And, you know, they were good. They were really good. And this is basically not the Showtime Lakers these are not, these are just average Lakers. Charles Barkley even said, hey, look, you know what? They're another team from Southern California. They, I, they, they're just losers. And that's bad when you got, you know, other people talking about how bad they are. You know, I really thought that I was about ready to see a hot pile of garbage on my television set this, this evening. Well, I guess I didn't. Good thing I kind of slept on it and just woke up and watched the highlights. I ain't gonna lie, I never, I never miss a Laker game as much as I can. You know, because of the travel time and everything like that, I try to watch as much as I can. I, you know, I was just kind of tired today, and I just, you know, apologize if I'm like a little bit off today because I'm just tired. But like I said, I just. I just can't put up with the Lakers. And, you know, everybody says that, okay, this is the game. This is the game that's going to bring the Lakers back and bring them back to the point where they're going to be really, really good. No, this is not This is not it. This is not it. One game doesn't decide how you can turn around a season. You know, Michael Wolbon on, uh, from PTI said that if this game – could propel the Lakers. Why it can't propel the Lakers more into the standings because LeBron has the ability to turn it on and do this. But the thing about it is that they have not been able to move up in the standings. They're about like maybe ninth now in the standings. And it's just, it's not good. It's not good. I just can't understand how it's like this. Just can't understand it. But that's it for the Lakers. They're done. They're done. You know what? I am going to wrap this episode. But before I wrap this episode, I just want to give a shout out to my man, Matthew over at Comcast. Thank you for all your help today. 
uh, getting my um, television situated. And, you know, I really appreciate, you know, uh, the kind words. And I really appreciate you, uh, you know, listening and subscribing. And I appreciate everybody that does the same thing. Listen and subscribe. And like I said, you know, we have uh, a lot of different things that we put on here. Um, a couple of different segments wasn't on today. But, you know, we'll be back with more stuff and, you know, more segments like we usually do. Um, I want to say to uh, my friends Jill and Wayne, safe travels and, um, you know, enjoy Florida. Um, it's a big move, I understand. And I really wish you guys the best because uh, you've been really good to us. And um, we really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, my man, Dave May Jr., I really appreciate you, my man. Um, great conversation. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, thank you for your insights on baseball. And like I told you before, you know, you're always welcome here. You're always welcome. You know, I, I, I you know, I'm doing like the Chinese bow thing right now. And I'm letting you know that, hey, I, I really appreciate you. And thank you, always. All right, now, um, I do want to give out shout-outs in particulars. I want to say, uh, you know, shout-out to uh, everybody that listens, all my friends and, uh, you know, all my buddies. You know, I, I got so many people that, you know, I can't really, you know, I do want to mention uh, Bella B and uh, my man, Jeff and Southfield. I do want to mention my man, uh, Upside Down Mike, uh, Rob in the 321, uh, Senor Pant Legs, <laughs> Cigar City Capo, all you guys from my um, D Alien Illuminati's. I really appreciate you guys. Um, Coach uh, Justin, Dave Shepard, Dave Shepard from. Uh, uh, CBS Sports Radio, um, DA show. I really appreciate you guys. I love, love my my favorite morning show of all time. The DA show is funny as hell. Um, Raz, you need to take that foot out of your mouth and don't say anything for the next uh, two years. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, uh, Charlie, Chris. Kate, thank you once again for all your help, and I hope everything's all well with you. God bless you. Um, Denise Hyde, I appreciate you. Jeff Brown, Keith Stewart, my man uh, Rocco, Big Al, and his son Kareem from New Jersey. Appreciate you guys. Um, let me just want, I want to say that um, I didn't give out the phone number yet. The phone number for the Guru Talking Sports Show is 302-468-7239, 302-468-7239, and I do want to say, um, I want to give a big shout out to uh, my um, Uncle Gary, I really appreciate you, and uh, my cousin Dane, uh, me and Dane was talking about the Orioles the other day, and uh, he said, you know, look out for the Orioles, I just hope so, because, uh, you know, it makes me sad when, you know, the Orioles, the Blue Jays, and the Dodgers are not winning, and they're not on the on a, on a field. That's the, the sad thing about it. I just hope that, you know, they can get back on the field and play. I'm tired of, uh, you know, all this stuff with baseball and all the junk that's been going on. I don't want to get, get back into that. But anyway, follow us on social media. Uh, the Guru of Sports Show is on YouTube. After you hear this podcast, it'll be placed on uh, YouTube. You can go back and listen to it, the whole thing, no matter what. Um, follow me on Facebook on the Guru's Daily Shorts. IG, like I said, we have a brand new uh, uh Instagram page for all the things for the Guru Talking Sports. 
is called the Guru Talk of Sports underscore podcast on IG, Instagram. Check it out, and you know, like I said, we'll uh, we'll be posting a lot of different things on there. I got a few things I w- I need to post in the next couple uh, hours or so. Uh, Gmail me at gurusdailyshorts at gmail.com. That is my uh, Gmail address. On Twitter, I'm at goat39 on Twitter. Goaty's at blackgoat39 on Twitter. I don't know what he's been doing, but uh, that's his Twitter handle. Um, Find us on anywhere that you find your podcast. We're on including Spreaker, Spotify, Podchasers, iTunes, iHeartRadio. And uh, we're also on uh, Amazon, too. I'm not going to say her name because she'll end up talking to me um, in the background. Okay, big props and uh, shout-outs to the Mary Mac show on grief. Mary Mac is a very, very great, great podcast to listen to. If, you, uh, you know, if you're going through anything, you check her out because she'll help you. She'll definitely help you out. Um, Got to give a big shout out to my man, Jeff Duarte from Cali Sports News. Um, I know, I've been very tardy, but I'm going to try to do something here as soon as possible. I know I keep saying that, but I am going to do something. Um, shout out to my um, cousin Curtis and his son and their podcast that they have is called The Young GM. Um, he's a... Uh, He's been fired from 31 different uh, <laughs> uh, GM jobs, and he found land one. I think he's still in Cleveland. But anyway, it's just a, you know, that's his uh, the little running joke that he has. But um, he's really good. I really enjoy it. Football season, um, there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on in football season, and they, they basically uh, do this for football. And I, I'm always going to support uh family members, I'm always going to support anyone that gives me the support, and I really appreciate that. Um, The Hip Hop Brothers, I appreciate you guys, Um, and like I said, my favorite favorite baseball player of all time is Mr. Dave May Jr., and um, former Major League Baseball player, and he's a scout now for Toronto Blue Jays. Thank you for your information, and um, I know that, you know, I, 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 I tried to get it out as much as I could. And, you know, and that's the thing. I, I um, really appreciate him because, you know, he, you know, anytime I text him or call him or talk to him, he's always got the time for me. And I really appreciate that. That is something that, you know, thanks is very, you know, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I, I cannot stress enough. You know, the people that you have in your life, you really appreciate them. Um, like I said, my career, that what I'm doing right now, I really love it. And I, I, I'm very, very thankful. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'm not going to say anything, but hopefully I can have some, uh, some uh, company with me as well. I'm um, not going to go into too many details about that. But anyway, the crew... Is uh Caden Guru. <laughs> Me and uh Ray Guru got into a uh, we was talking the other day. We've been you know, we had a couple times where we were up in the same area and we were basically talking around. We said that uh Caden Guru hasn't been on the show for so long. He reminds me of uh there was a show years ago called Star and Buckwall. Buckwall was never there. Star was always there doing the uh, doing the thing, just like I'm doing right now. And um, they said, "Well, you know, we're gonna have to. The next time he comes back in studio, whenever he comes back, we're gonna have to retrain this guy because he doesn't. You know, he's been off this show for the longest. But Katie Guru is working now. He's a working man. So you know, I you know, we we've been trying to get him back in." You know, I haven't seen him since uh, since a, a little bit, so uh, we're going to try to get him back. He's the executive producer and board op. Ray Guru is my um, technical advisor, musical director, and um, 
uh, really, really good inspiration and uh, big props to you, Ray. We appreciate you. Um, and he helps me out a lot. Um, helped me out a couple times on the road as well. Dante Guru is my backup uh, co-host and show advisor. And my co-host is Cousin Aaron. And Cousin Aaron, thank you for the kind words today, uh, this week. Um, sorry I didn't get a chance to reply because I've been, you know, doing a few things. But you get yourself well. Get back here. And uh, you better be back here for the draft. That's all I can say. Um, hope do, do your homework, too. So, you know, we're doing our homework, trying to put together the draft thing. Uh, like I said, the combine is going on. And, you know, basically we're looking at uh, – a lot of different things for the combine and you know hopefully we can have some kind of good draft information for you as soon as uh baseball season kicks in we're gonna have uh we're gonna have baseball talk again i'm gonna see if i can try to get uh dave back on before he uh goes you know goes into his job as well and like i said i don't want to interrupt him while he's doing his job um, because, you know, he has a job and, and, you know, we, we, we respect that. We definitely respect that. Our motto is saying is this has been a Black Goat Productions for Black Goat Entertainment. Copyright 2022, all rights reserved. Um, you know our motto, we don't hate, we congratulate, we always create, and we don't steal from anybody. We always give credit where credit is due. And... We really, really appreciate um, everything that comes our way. And we always give credit to people that have earned credit. I hate the word deserve, so I'll never say deserve. You know what you mean, uh, deserve. Okay, you already know. All right, uh, like I said, always use the hashtag big props. Big props to everyone that uh, has been mentioned on this podcast. And big props to... uh, Everyone and you for uh, listening, and I really appreciate you uh, just coming through and uh, subscribe to where you can. We appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. Um, the next time I come on this microphone will be um, next week, and um, I will be a little bit more sharper because I was a little bit tired and coming out of. Uh, sleep going right back going right on the microphone is uh i should have waited a couple hours to do this but i didn't want to because i wanted to hurry up and get make sure i got the word out there of what's going on and um, i want to let you guys know that i really appreciate everything really appreciate you for listening please subscribe to the podcast uh wherever you find your podcast we're you know we're always here like I said, we're always here. You hear the notes uh, fold, folding up, papers crumbling right now. Like I said, if you give us a call at 302-468-7239, I might even pick up, I will pick up, and I'll talk to you and let you know what's going on. You guys take care of yourself. We are out of here. We will be back next week for episode 103. And yes, it'll be episode 103. Big props and shout outs to you all. Uh, Be safe out there. We will see you back here next week. Enjoy the rest of your uh, your sports weekend. The Guru will talk to you real soon. You guys take care. I will see you back here next week. God bless. Be safe. Talk to you later. Out.